Pareto Principle and the Red Queen. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Radical Moderate. Today what I want to do is I want to explore and combine two well-known phenomenon that might be shaping our societies and also our everyday experience more than we realize. One of them is the Pareto Principle, which is also known as the 80-20 rule. And the other one is the Red Queen phenomenon inspired by Lewis Carroll's book, Through the Looking Glass. So what I'll do is I'll discuss how these two ideas might explain income inequality into society and affect all of us. Remember that I'm not here to lecture, I'm just here to explore ideas and integrate different principles uh, alongside you guys. So let me know where you agree and what you disagree with from what I'm saying here. So let's dive in. First, let's start with the Pareto Principle. It's sometimes also called the 80-20 rule in business. And this is a concept that originated from the economist Wilfredo Pareto, which was an Italian guy who observed that in Italy, about 80% of the land was owned by only 20% of the people. He noticed also that this pattern across also a whole bunch of other areas in the society that showed this kind of an unequal distribution across the board. Now, in modern times, we see this as the 80-20 rule, which in business, tech, as well as the wealth distribution, you can see it very starkly. We can even see it in the social media and different channels, right? So, for example, in business, 20% of the workers contribute to about 80% of the production or the output of a system. And within even that 20% of the people that do 80% of the work, another 20% does 80% of the work within that 20%. So this is kind of a pattern that continues and scales all the way up to the notorious 1% versus the 99%, and then all the way even up to the 0.01%, which we hear politicians talk about. This fractal-like type of a pattern of inequality repeats throughout society, showing the imbalances that we see all around us. Now let's move on to the Red Queen phenomenon. This idea borrowed from evolutionary biology comes from Through the Looking Glass, which was a book that was written by Lewis Carroll many years ago. In chapter two of that book, the Red Queen tells Alice as they're kind of standing in a flower garden that here in this world, you have to do all the running just to stand in the same place. Essentially meaning you gotta run as fast as you can just to stay in the same place. She was kind of alluding to a movie ground under their feet sliding in the opposite direction of their movement almost kind of like a treadmill in today's world this translates into a constant pace of the society and change that we see that we need to keep up with the faster things evolve the harder we have to work in order to keep up with it and then let alone get ahead of it so this is what people refer to oftentimes as the rat race and also describe it as a perpetual competition with others over resources, uh, similar to what we see in the wild, you know, and in nature. The small difference, however, is that the competition in the wild is over basic resources, such as food and water that are required for basic survival. Whereas here in the modern society, competition is mostly over what we want. These are things that fulfill our never uh, satiating ego. So uh, it is that Maslow's hierarchy of needs that people are competing for. Now, what happens when we combine these two ideas? Well, the Pareto principle suggests that small groups sets the production rate, while the Red Queen phenomenon implies that such rate will quickly become the standard and is akin to forcing the ground moving under all of us, forcing us all to keep running faster and faster only to maintain our place. Together, they kind of create a system where competition is high and competitors are unequal. Furthermore, the better competitors set the pace of the game and the lesser players fall behind with inevitable and perpetually widening gaps between these groups. Now, in the modern society, either inflation or just simply price increases are one example of how the ground is moving under 
all of our feet. We're all familiar with how the recent increase in inflation rate created the social unrest that turned an election. But there are also hidden causes of price increases that we often miss. For example, the recent $800 million contract for just the baseball player was met with like admiration by baseball fans. What they don't realize is the unspoken truth in how such extreme contracts distribute the cost of such players across the game, trickling down ultimately to the fans by increasing the overall cost of going to a ball game. This can be seen through higher ticket prices or even cable bills for watching the very same game on TV because you can't afford to go watch it in the stadium. So, because this is because the owners will inevitably have to pass down the costs to others along the supply chain with fans oblivious to this being as the end receivers of the service. This can be through higher ticket prices or even cable bills for watching the very same game on TV because you can't afford to go watch it in the stadium anymore. Because the owners will inevitably have to pass down the costs to others along the supply chain with fans obviously the end of the line. All they experience is the surprising rising prices that's preventing working class fans from going to the game while corporate clients populate the stadium. In the modern society, the pace of change is relentless. Those already ahead can leverage their position while others must work harder and harder or exponentially harder, in fact, just to keep up. And this appears inevitable if we mix and apply the Pareto principle and the Red Queen phenomenon to any free system. We already experienced this during the Gilded Age. It's going to be a subject in another video that I will make in the future. So, what's the takeaway though? The Pareto Principle and the Red Queen tell us that free systems will cause inequality in almost a deterministic way. And this inequality will increase over time as power concentrates in the hands of a few and they will obviously do their best to protect this accumulation of power and wealth. It's the role of a well-functioning system to understand these inevitabilities and then to account for it with minimum degree of manipulation and guidance. But eventually, something has to be done. A free system will ultimately self-regulate to an equilibrium. But whether this equilibrium is really optimal for our society is ultimately the judgment of the folks that are living in that system. And in a democracy, I can tell you that we can only hope to reach that optimal state of equilibrium peacefully. So are these dynamics really fixed laws or can we reshape them? Does a free society naturally concentrate wealth and power? I mean, can we level the playing field through policy, culture and education? And what's really the role of justice in addressing all of these imbalances? Is inequality a feature or a bug of the modern systems? So we know that communism and socialism have failed. So let's not go there because, you know, we know it doesn't work and it's been a disaster over the past century. But how can we then improve capitalism to address these issues? Because it has to be addressed. I'm curious what you guys think. So do you see the Pareto Principle and the Red Queen phenomenon in your own life or in the current economy? And what should we do about it? As a radical moderate, I'm here to explore the middle ground, trying to kind of balance the drive and the innovation of the top 20% with the more humble needs of the bottom 80%. I mean, people should be allowed to stop and smell the roses without falling drastically behind. If this society is going to be driven constantly by the Red Queen phenomenon, then when can people rest willingly? So we should ask these tough questions without jumping to extreme conclusions, of course. We over lives. All right, before we wrap it up, here's something fun. I've written a song for this channel. It's called the Radical Moderate Anthem. I wrote the lyrics and used a little bit of musical arrangements and also some AI magic to develop it over the past month. It's really ready to go. It's been a little bit of a hobby of mine has been playing around with this and I hope you enjoy it. But thank you again so much for watching and see you guys next time on The Radical Moderate. So throw down the rocks, no need to retaliate. The mission is peace.